That one clear? All right, preacher dear. Go right ahead and bring the word of the Lord to us for this Wednesday evening, August 17th. Amen. I'm going to do just that. Just want to take some time to thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and for all of this teaching that we have been getting because it's really being a blessing to my spirit and to my soul. The more I take in the word of the Lord, the more I want to. I really had some trouble this time only because my iPad, it's what happens when you lean on these conveniences. Um, had to be fixed, and I couldn't get it out of the shop, and I prayed, and I did finally get it, so I thank God for that. This story that um, I'm about to read to you in, from the Word um, is very, very interesting. Um, Jesus caught a lot of flack about it. Um, really, it what they, they call it the story of the adulterous woman, but in actuality, it really wasn't about her at all. Um, it really was about um, the Pharisees and their disdain for Jesus Christ, trying to set him up and make a uh, image of him not doing what he's supposed to do according to the Mosaic law and according to what um, they all know to be true or what they feel to be true. Uh, Jesus, they don't really know who he is. They haven't really received him for who he is, being the son of God. And um, they don't recognize that he's omniscient and he knows everything. He knows it all. He knows their trap. He knows what they're trying to do. And he knows what's going to come. And, and what gets me about this is that it really starts, we're going to start reading in the eighth chapter in the first verse. But it really starts in the seventh chapter when they lead up to this. And, and they were saying, the office, they said never, they wanted to know, the Pharisees wanted to know why haven't they brought Jesus in after Jesus has been getting so many people to turn to God. Why haven't you brought him in, they wanted to know. And their officers said, never have a man spoke like this before. They recognize there's something different about Jesus and his authority and the way he speaks. They recognize that and they try to say that to the leaders, but um, they finally left and Jesus went to one of his favorite places to go. I don't know if um, you have a favorite place to, when you wanna go before the Lord, if you're not in the house of God, in your house, if you set up a place where you can reach God, where you can reach out to him in prayer, and um, fasting and reading the word someplace where you are comfortable in your reaching out to the Lord. Jesus had a place. If you, if you look in his word many times, it says Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And it was after this time that he spoke with the Pharisees and the, um, the others that were there that he went to the Mount of Olives. That was his place of security and quietness where he reached out to his father and he knew that he, he would receive direction there. He already knew what was happening and he needed to prepare himself. So he went to his place of prayer and his place of security. And it says in the eighth chapter, the first verse, if you could stand please for the reading of God's word. Thank you. Takes me a little longer to get out the chair. All right. Eighth chapter, first verse, and it reads like this. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very at. Now Moses' law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what saith thou? Then they said, tempting him, that they might have something to accuse him with, but Jesus stooped down and he began to write with his fingers. And I know you heard this story before, but there's some things very significant. You may take your seat. It's very significant in this that I think is just awesome about our savior. And as 
Jesus, when he went into the Mount of Olives and came out early in the morning, he came to the temple. And it says that the people were already there. They came unto him and they sat down and he taught them. What a nice scene of Jesus sitting down with the people, teaching them. That's what I love about Bible study and sitting with Pastor Flores and listening to him teach the word. And not just him, but many of the associate preachers, the ministers there who have a word and they teach the word of God. It is important that we gather in as much as we can, because that's how we strengthen ourselves. We strengthen ourselves by reading and digesting the word of God. If you just take a quick read through the word, you can miss so much. But when you get into the real study of it, you get an understanding of what the Lord was trying to say. So after he left the Mount of Olives, early in the morning, he came again into the temple. And all the people were there. They were excited to see and to meet Jesus and to hear him teach them. But in the midst of all of that, here comes the scribes and the Pharisees. And not only did they come, but they brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And they set her in the midst. Can you still see me? Hello? No, we can't see you. Okay, one second, please. There we go. All right. This, this is something that people still do today. Try to trick up the person teaching the word. Even try to, to get you to forget what you're talking about or get more concentrated on what's going on around you. And preachers, really, you, you have to pray and get your mind and spirit together because they will come at you for the very same purpose that they came after Jesus. Who does she think she is? She's not a preacher. Who does she learn from? They want to test you and try you. And that's what they did with, dream, with Jesus. And he sat down and taught them. And while he was teaching them is when the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Yeah. They set her in the midst while he's teaching the word, teaching them about God. They bring in this woman. It should have been obvious to everyone what, what this was about. But to everyone, it, it was not. To Jesus, it was. They brought and they said, Master, this woman has been taken in the very act of adultery. I, I can see it now as if it was a church meeting. Adultery. And they began to sneer at her, those that were around, because there were a lot of people around wanting to hear about Jesus. And now they're hearing about this. Taken in adultery. Oh, God, how awful. And it is awful. But they sneered at her and Jesus didn't say a word. He just began to bend over and write down in the sand. And they're saying, Master. We just told you this woman has been taken in the very act. Of, so nobody told us. We saw her in the very act of adultery. What are you going to do to her? It's funny that they call him master yeah. when, they don't, when they don't honor him. Now, the law of Moses commanded us that such should be stoned. But so, what say of you, Jesus? They wanted to see what his response would be. They knew he was a, 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 a person who loved sinners, everybody. He showed love to everyone. So they wanted to see his response. And they, when they set her in the midst and they asked him, and he didn't answer, he started writing, they asked him again, Moses, and the law commanded us that this we should this very act, we should stone her. But we need to know, master, teacher, what say of you? They said this to him, tempting him. 
that they might have something to accuse him with. So they continued asking him, I mean, can you just imagine? He's trying to teach. He's trying to teach the word and they're calling him master. This woman, look, look at her. Yeah. They caught her in the act. They didn't bother dressing her to bring her into the temple. This is the temple now. So it shows how much respect they had for God and, and the word and being taught. They brought her right into the midst while he was teaching. I'm sure she didn't have on many clothes that they already said they caught her in the act. And they brought her in and stood her before him. What do you say? What should we do to her? So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And then again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they heard it. They heard it. They heard what he said. Ye who are without sin, cast a stone, be the first to cast a stone at her. And when they heard that being convicted by their own conscience, they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And that to me, that's just so reminiscent on how things are today. We invite everyone to, please say this and cut off. We invite everybody to come into the house of God. We want people to learn about Jesus and his love for them. Come, come, to, come to the house. We invite them in, but then when they're not dressed like we dress or they don't look like we look, or maybe they've been caught in some terrible sin and they don't wanna come in because they're afraid of, of the reaction of the people in the house. Because you know how we can do sometimes. Oh, who is that? Isn't that the one that they said was with? You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. So they began to whisper and they, when Jesus began to write in, they didn't know what to do. But he said, ye who are without sin, be the first to cast a stone at her. He was still a man with power and authority. That's why all the people had come to the temple in the first place. They wanted to hear Jesus, that man who had spoke to them the day before, who convicted them and, and made them want to be closer to God. Even those soldiers that were out there that heard Jesus, they told them, they said, man, we've never heard anybody speak like him. They were impressed. They were convicted by the power and the authority that rests inside of our Savior, Jesus. That they were convicted of their sins. And even at this point, while they're beginning to tip, you know, how you put the finger up, I'm leaving. Okay. Um, they began to tip from the oldest to the youngest. I always wonder why the oldest left first. Maybe because he knew he had a lot more, a lot more sin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He older person. But that's they said that's the order. And I think that's in there for a reason. He just the Lord wants us to know. He got up out of there. And then they began to go out one by one, not saying anything. And <clears throat> even until the last, and they said that Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus stood himself up and saw that none, that's how focused he was on his job. He didn't even realize all of them had gone. And when he stood himself up and he was alone with the woman standing in the midst and he saw none but the woman, he said unto her woman, where are thy accusers? Where are the ones that are pointing their fingers at you? That woman, come on, you know how we do. How could she? We all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God, but they weren't, they weren't concerned about that. Jesus 
full of compassion, began to speak to the woman. And he asked where her accusers were and did they condemn her? And she said, no, they, they left. Hold on, I just moved out of my place. Okay, thank you. And he said unto her, I don't accuse you either. Go, sin no more. Yeah. He could have condemned her to death, just as we could be condemned to death. But he knew there was a cross waiting for him where his blood would be shed and people like her and I and you, sins would be washed away. And he loved her that much to say, go. But he also said, sin no more. That was the, the, the part that she had to get and that she got because I, I see that she recognized him and called him Lord. God is so good. He knows, he sees everything. He is the God that seeth everything, knoweth everything. We, we, go, we know what, how to get to the corner. He knows how to get around the corner, down the street and to the next block. He knows our lives inside and out. We have fallen short so many times. Why my phone is doing this. All right, here we go. The point of the matter is that he could have said stone her and been right in the law, but he did not. He had compassion on her. And those that were there that wanted to condemn her, when he said, ye that are without sin, the authority in his voice, it doesn't say that he shouted it at him. You that without sin, you, you throw the stone. Yeah. It didn't say that he said it like that. But he had authority. He has authority and power. So as he was saying it, they began to tip. Well, the Lord is speaking to us today also. He wants us to know that even though we have fallen short, there is redemption through Jesus Christ, just as it was for that adulterous woman who didn't serve him or worship him. He did not condemn her to death, but showed her mercy and compassion. And even those that were with, that were with those acute, the Pharisees that were bringing her to be condemned and stoned, he noticed that there was only her. If they were really concerned about the law of Moses, then they would have had her and the man that she got caught with, but he was nowhere to be seen. God is a God of mercy and compassion and love. And we have to be that way for those who come into the house because there are some that are, that are coming in who've been on drugs for a long time, aren't thinking correctly. Some who have never been shown compassion. Believe it or not, you, there are people like that who have never been shown compassion. So they live up, they live and come up bitter, not loving themselves or anyone else. And they need somebody to show them what Jesus showed this woman. Can you do that? Can you reach out to someone? who may want to come to church, but they're afraid of what the church people are gonna say when they come in and their dress is too short or their pants are too messed up. We have to show the love and compassion. That's how we fill the house of God. Yes. Show them love, show them about Jesus, teach them Jesus loves them. This we know for the Bible tells us so. Jesus, lover of our soul. I was listening to a movie the other day about um, Denzel Washington being a pilot and messing up. 
and the, and the plane went down and they said there was a hundred and no 140 something souls on board that that touched me souls they said they didn't they didn't say bodies or anything yeah. they didn't all they didn't die in the movie but they talked about their souls which is really the most important part of us our souls so i encourage you just as jesus did first of all to learn the word and know it so that as somebody who is interested in coming to the church ask you questions about, well, I've, 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 been, I've done this, I'm, I'm an adulterer, what, what am I gonna do with? Tell them about Jesus yes. and how Jesus loves us one and all, how he died on a cross for us so that those sins that we have could be washed away. Isn't it good to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus? Oh God, I thank you because he could have left us just as we were. Yep. Give God praise tonight for the word of God. I hope you got an understanding of what I was trying to let you see what we need and what we need to show. They are coming to the house. You, you need to know that. The people are coming to the house. They just need to know that they're welcome. And in Zion Baptist Church of Ambler, I feel welcome. And I'm just like the woman I've fallen short of the glory of God. Yep. Amen. But he washed me white as snow. Praise the Lord, everybody. Man, praise God. Amen. God is good. What a wonderful Amen. Word. Thank praise you. Lord. Good word. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for that powerful good word. word. Yeah. Hallelujah. So much. Glory to God. God is, God is using you in a mighty way, preacher Dad. Thank you, preacher Dad. Thank, Thank you for you. that word. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.